LSTMs, long short term memory, one of the most important and crucial topics when it comes to deep learning. There are a lot of videos, articles and blogs already available, but still people are confused while understanding the concepts of LSTM. And if your understanding on LSTM is not clear, there are certain other topics like GRU, bidirectional LSTMs, which will even be more difficult to understand. So I have curated a set of videos on LSTMs. In case you are familiar with little bit of knowledge on neural networks, then this video can definitely help you to understand the concepts of LSTM. And I can guarantee you that after you watch this video, Shiddat say very patiently, if you watch this video till the end, at least twice, I can guarantee you that there is no way you will be needing a separate video or a separate article or a separate blog to understand the concepts of LSTM. So I have made sure my explanation is concise, is clear and is to the point so that my students, my viewers can enjoy this. Apart from that, I would also like to tell that this particular LSTM video is nothing but a part of my AI and data science program that I'm going to launch on 1st of May. So you can actually get an understanding that this is how the videos are going to be in the entire program of AI and data science that I'm launching on 1st of May. In case you want to be an early bird, you want to get an access to the course even, even before the official launch date, let me know in the comment section and reach out to me on WhatsApp or LinkedIn. Apart from that, another small news before we get started with the big video on LSTM is that my team has again created a ebook on NLP and machine learning. So in case you are interested to get access to our ebooks, use the comment section, write it down, write down NLP ebooks or ML ebooks, and we will be sending you the ebooks within a couple of days. See you in the video. Enjoy the video. This is going to be a lengthy one and the chapter wise descriptions, you can check it out in the description below. In case you have any comments, any feedbacks, anything, let me know in the comment section or reach out to me. See you in the video. Hi, let's talk about LSTMs. What do you mean by LSTMs? Long short term memory. Now to understand LSTMs from scratch, definitely you need to have an understanding on all the deep neural networks, including ANNs. ANN is not required, but if you know that will be really good. But RNN and ANN are majorly required. Uh, without RNNs, understanding LSTMs is going to be very, very difficult. Okay, so I assume that everybody knows RNN. If not, probably we'll have a recap, short recap on RNN. Now, what do you mean by LSTM? In simple terms, LSTM is nothing but a special version of RNN solving the short term memory problem. Okay. So the full form of LSTM is very simple. It is long, short term memory. Right. Now, LSTM was launched because there were some flaws, there were some issues with RNNs. Okay, so RNNs were basically behaving like Gajani. They had the short term memory, but somehow they were losing on the long term memory part. Okay, now what, how does the RNN architecture looks like? It is very simple, right? Let's say you have an input then you have an output and there is a HT that comes right input as an XT output as in YT right now the internal architecture here was very simple to understand now if we talk with respect to some examples let's try to take some example let's say my first statement is today due to my condition I need to take a break due to my physical condition or mental condition, whatever it is. The second statement is last year due to my physical phase condition, 
I had to take a break. Okay. Now you can interpret both the sentences and you can see that there is a difference in the way we are answering. Here we have need and here we have had. Now we all know these both these differences are because of this keywords, right? Now RNN will be able to not be able to solve this problem if you use this RNN architecture for RNN they will be remembering all these because these are the short term memory but these words are basically long term memory which was passed long back that's why RNN might not be uh, uh, a traditional RNN might not be able to interpret so this type of condition this type of situation where you need to take a decision based on a very fast word or a very long term memory based approach this is where the problem with rnn now traditionally how does rnn looks like so let's say we have different boxes we have today we have the ht component then next word let's say you then we have the next word which is so then dot 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 we have some word here where the output prediction is me right today due to my physical condition i and then when it goes the output is me right on your x axis you have the time constraint right so traditional rnn they don't remember uh, well because of certain issues now what are those issues again as i told you for understanding our LSTMs, you need to understand the core concepts behind RNN, the problems with RNN. One of the problems, classic problems with RNN was a vanishing gradient problem. If you, okay, now vanishing gradient problem. We also have exploding gradient problem. These were two classical problems because of which LSTM came into picture. LSTM majorly came because of vanishing gradient, but it also solves exploding gradient to a certain extent. Okay, now to autocomplete these type of sentences, yes, LSTMs are used, long short term are used. Now, with the context of LSTM, if you go through multiple online videos, even on YouTube, on if you go through multiple blogs you will realize that this is to be honest this is a difficult concept this is a complex topic and many of the videos many of the platforms many of the blogs it's very difficult to interpret and understand okay so i will try to try to explain you in a very layman's term in a very easy terms okay so LSTMs are complex topic and core concept of deep learning. We will try to understand the what, the how and the why part separately. Okay. So let's get started with the basic concept. Now when it comes to basic concepts in neural networks, we always talk about ANN which is the artificial neural network, right? Now, how does artificial neural network works? It's as simple as like this. We have some input neurons. We have some hidden layers, maybe multiple layers, uh, multiple hidden layers, and all of them are connected to each other. And okay, and then this is how it looks like. This is the input layer. This is the hidden layer. This is the output layer. Right? This is a traditional ANN network. Now, traditional ANN network or even RNN network, they cannot deal with sequential data. Okay. They cannot deal with time series data or they cannot deal with textual data because in textual data, let's say, hi, my name is Satyajit. Each and every word has a predecessor or has multiple predecessors because of which the entire sentence can change. Similarly, in time series data, in time series data, let's say you are dealing with a monthly data, January 19, the sales was 15 million. 
and then we have february 19 the sales was 18 million and dot 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 right now january 20 the sales is 18 million what will be the sales in february 20 now it does not only depend on the last few instances it also is impacted it is also based on the previous february right so again same with feb 21 it is not only dependent on the last five or six instances of data it is also dependent on feb 2020 also dependent on feb 2019 and this is where traditional neural networks will fail okay so in in case of these kind of scenarios especially the textual data the nlp data understanding the semantic meaning is very very important okay but the problem with rnn is we have the vectors let's say let's say i'm talking about a simple example hi my name is now if you take it in rnn what basically happens it does not understand the semantic meaning it directly converts this entire sentence into a vector representation right the full sentence goes into the neural network so let's say this is your rnn network the full sentence goes into the network the problem is we cannot understand the meaning of each and every individual words okay so with r with ann the problem is this that's why this type of problems you have to use rnn but again rnn also has a problem okay first of all try to understand this thing ann is a very basic neural network textual data you cannot feed in ann network textual data you can feed in rnn but still in rnn also there is a problem that will occur which is the long short term memory problem in rnn if you pass a textual data majorly it will be able to understand the short term references Let's say you are passing Satyajit as a new token. It will remember these, but it might not remember the previous instances of data. That is a problem with RNN. Okay. And the problem with ANN is you cannot pass token by token in ANN. ANN, the entire sentence goes as a single token, single input. Okay. So semantic meaning is lost. So if we take a simple example, uh, what is the problem with RNN? Let's say I'm talking about my state. Odisha is a beautiful state. Odisha has a multiple places to visit. We have this, we have Lingaras temple, we have Puri Jagannath temple. Multiple sentences are there. And then the last sentence is the language, language spoken here is there is a break we need to predict this so in the entire text we are talking about odisha right now here the problem with rnn will be it only takes certain words uh, into the short term memory account and it does not remember the full time context does not remember the long term con uh, context so it might have forgotten this word called as odisha so obviously the language spoken is odia if you treat it using a lstm obviously it will understand because odisha somehow is not a part of the short term memory but a part of the long term memory by the time you reach here okay so in rnn we will not be able to get this word because of the long term issue long term memory issue and the long term memory issue is because of vanishing gradient or exploding gradient problem okay so the final output is uh, it might forget the initial words same like ghazani as i told you in the beginning that rnn has a problem of forgetting important and older words long term memory words so how does a lstm architecture looks like we will jump into an lstm architecture let's try to draw the architecture of rnn so we have the h0 then we have h1 h2 
then we have three dot 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 and then we have h n let's say for t is equals to n one t is equals to two t is equals to three okay and then we have the output right now let's try to take a small example and try to understand um, the context of short term and, and long term uh, memories okay um so we'll try we'll take two words uh, we will take two sentences okay the cat sat on the mat and the next uh, sentence is the sh the sun shines brightly in the sky these are the two sentences okay now when it comes to there are two types of memory storage right one we have the short term memory storage and then we have the long term memory storage right so in short term memory storage what happens is while the entire sentences are processed let's say the first sentence is processed the cat sat on the mat the entire context is stored into the short term memory all the words and then the second sentence comes in all the words are stored in short term memory okay temporarily for now what happens in the long term memory long term memory storage as the processing continues the information from short term memory some of the information of the short term memory is transferred into long term memory based on the relevance and importance now for example in the first sentence the cat sat on the mat our lstm model identified that cat sat and mat are not relevant or they are less relevant so they do not get stored into the long term memory so eventually if they do not get stored into long term memory they do not go to the final output layer let's say for from this corpus we got to know that shines brightly and sky these are important words they might go to the long term memory so they go to the long term memory because they are important with respect to specific task in hand and based on which the long term memory storage contains these type of words another concept in lstm is deletion see i am not talking about the mathematical part right now because mathematical part will be little bit complex to understand but using examples your understanding will be clear okay. when it comes to deletion of information while the transfer from short term to long term happens in this process some words get deleted or forgotten based on relevance some of the words okay let's say let's say initially cat sat and mat only cat was important but going further cat's relevance was decre decreased so cat was removed from the list of long term memory okay now who decides that there is a forget gate in lstm who decides that this is the having the decision power of either keeping it or deleting it they internally use a sigmoid function okay now if you know activation functions you will be able to understand sigmoid function is one y equals to by one uh, sorry y is equals to one by one plus e to the power of minus x, right ranges between minus one to one right so sigmoid function now based on sigmoid function the forget gate decides which information to discard which information to store in the long term memory okay now architectural wise rnn and lstm i will be covering slowly slowly but this is how it is right 
a very classic issue that classic interview question that is being asked is can you tell the difference between rnn and lstn now the first difference is based on architecture okay so in rnn it looks like this we have input we have hidden layer and we have a state function right so the architecture is very simple here we have input we have output we have the state function apart from that we also have another state which is called as the long term memory state so there are two states the short term memory and the long term memory state and here it is little bit complex architecture okay so the architecture wise simple and complex second thing is yes in rnn there is no long term memory state here we have a long term memory state right so now the difference in architecture is because short term memory and long term memory need to interact they basically try to interact okay long term memory and short term memory in order to they basically interact to understand what to store in the long term or not okay so that's all about the differences between rnn and ls let's go ahead and draw uh, let's try to take a book example basically a book architecture of rnn and lstn and try to understand more about the differences in their architecture and in their internal uh, built up hi in the previous videos we talked about the basic concepts theoretically in this video we are jumping into the architectural part on how rnn and lstm are different from each other right we all know the basic concepts of ann rnn we all know why lstm was introduced lstm is nothing but the long short term memory right now why L L L lstms were introduced the reason was very simple rnn had some issues rnn was not able to store the long term memory apart from that there were some issues with vanishing gradient problem and exploding gradient problem because of which lstm was introduced okay now you can see in the previous video also we talked about the differences between rnn and lstm right i told you the major difference is obviously this and talking about the architecture you can see rnn is having a very very simple architecture whereas lstm is having a complex architecture okay we will definitely be getting more into this architectural level problems and we'll try to understand the mathematics of it not in this video in the next video okay now let's try to focus on the major things about the architecture of lstm okay now what i'm going to do is i will instead of creating okay let's do one thing i'm just trying to focus on this part okay so let's say only this part okay just focus on this part now in this part i will try to draw a few lines first and then i will explain you so this is my first line this is my second okay now what i am trying to explain you here is this part is basically called the forget gate okay and this part is called the input gate and finally this part is called the output gate now these are the three different gates in lstm the detailed mathematics will be covered in a future video right now we will be trying to take a simple example or a simple story and try to understand these three gates okay from a layman's point of view 
now how many of you know this story on the three little pigs if you don't know i will recommend you please stop this video go to youtube just search the three little pig story you will get tons of videos watch any one of them and you will have an understanding of the story but even if you don't want to do uh, you don't want to go to youtube you want to listen the story from me would be little bit boring but i'll try to explain the story the story is very simple so there were two pigs okay uh, let's say male pig and female pig okay now they gave birth to three little pigs now they raised the little pigs and they once little pigs were little bit grown up they told you have to find your own path you have to leave house and be independent okay so one of the pig went and created a house using straws okay another pig went and created a house using wood so this using straws this using wood wood as in um, some some broken woods from trees and all those things okay the third pig could not build a house he tried to go here and there and he was a bit confused what to do what not to do and he tried a lot he was very hard working he tried a lot and then finally he came across some rocks idea and then he took some rocks converted into bricks and then created a really good house okay now one day a wolf came in search of food the wolf went into the first pig's house the wolf said open the door open the door the pig was not opening and then wolf shouted if you don't open i will i will thrash your house and come inside and pig did not open the wolf went in thrashed the house and the house was broken into pieces the pig ran into the second pig's house similarly the wolf went into the second pig's house the wood the house was made with wood the wolf did the same thing come out i will eat you blah 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 and the two pigs were shivering they told no we are not going to open the wolf told if you don't come out i'll thrash come inside and eat you guys and then same happened the second house also got ruined the two pigs ran into the third pig's house now the wolf also came here he again did the same thing if you don't want to open i will come in i will thrash your house he tried to thrash in but he could not the wolf was pissed off the wolf went to the roof on the roof there was a chimney through the chimney the wolf saw there is a passage i can jump in i will go and i will eat the pigs wolf did the same thing jumped into it the moment wolf jumped in inside there was a tray there was a huge utensils where water was boiling under wood wood fire the fox the wolf sorry the wolf directly fell into that bottle of that that utensils he was completely burnt and then he ran away so wolf ran away that was basically the three little pig story now why i wanted to talk about this story is because while you heard this story right initially there are certain words that your memory is processing and storing as important words right first was yes male pig and female pig were there and then three little pigs came this became important and then pig one pig two pig three you thought pig one will be your initial hero but eventually pig one was not the hero then pig two you thought pig two is hero no pig two is also not hero finally it came to pig three then pig three you thought it will be hero yes he was the hero wolf when you heard about the wolf coming into the village yes you understood that wolf is a villain right or a bad guy so all these things when you are processing in your head 
somehow your head basically thinks and keeps some of the information in a short term in a short term um, um, memory and some in a long term memory okay exactly the same way how lstm works okay now talking about the forget gate talking about the forget gate which is this part right now based on the current input and short term context basically forget gate decides what to remove from the long term now while the story processes initially you heard about male pig and female pig but eventually when the story went ahead you kind of erased these two terms from your head because it was not important right that is the work of forget gate forget gate eventually tries to understand which one to remember which one to forget and then forgets it input gate based on your current input decides what to add as long term memory okay so when you heard about the first pig yes he was the hero first pig went into your short term memory then when you heard about the second pig it went into short term memory third pig it went into short term memory and then when the story progressed you understood that wolf broke this broke this and then the two pigs went here now you shifted the first two pigs details to long term the third pig was still in the short term right and then you also moved wolf to the long term memory so you are basically your internal gates are basically handling how to process the data and keep it as a short term memory or a long term right so and and what is what what about the output gate this is the output gate now output gate based on the current input decides what term to remove from long term memory to push to output layer okay it also creates the short term memory okay this this part output gate now whether the story was good or not is basically a part of your output gate because it decides whether the story was good or not good or not okay now that's a very theoretical storytelling approach to understand lstm on how our human brain works especially in the textual data let's say going back to one of the examples like i i talked about my state right odisha so if there is a huge statement let's say odisha is a beautiful state full of temples it has many places to visit many cultures to explore uh, blah 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 and you keep writing keep writing keep writing the language of odisha is dash okay now in this context when you are training this data to your neural networks right all of this information is basically a part of the short term memory okay and odisha is a part of your long term memory because you started with odisha when you started odisha was a part of short term memory but eventually it was pushed to the long term memory and based on this only you can predict that yes the language of odisha is odia the prediction is not because of any of the keywords it is only because of this and if you don't store it in long term memory if you use a traditional rnn network you will not be able to find this output and that is what lstm is doing lstm is storing the long term and the short term memory both so this is basically your short term and this is basically your long term. okay so to summarize i will try to redraw it let's say i'm i'm just drawing this part okay so let's say i have my huge box of window okay here comes my ht minus 1 here comes my i call it as ct minus 1 okay this one ct minus 1 this is ht minus 1 okay now i'm not drawing the internal things all these things you have a x you have a plus and then something like this 
and then you have a sigmoid and a sigmoid and a tan edge and a sigmoid yeah, something like this i'm not drawing fully i'm just uh, arbitrarily drawing like this yeah, something like this. now this is your ct and this is your ht right these are your output so generally to summarize lstm theoretically i'm summarizing i'll definitely cover the mathematics and internally i'll also cover each and every gate on how each and every gate works right we all know this is your forget gate this is your input gate and this is your output gate right so generally speaking you also have an input xt right so what is your input your input is always xt and ct minus 1 and ht minus 1 okay which ct is nothing but your long term memory short term memory and your input this is what goes to your neural networks right and in output you have your cell state and your hidden state which is two outputs what happens internally is it updates long term memory it updates the long term memory data and also remove old and add new data this is what is happening internally right for get get input get and output get right and what and second is it also creates short term memory okay that is how it works so what is this this is nothing but your cell state or your long term memory and this is your hidden state or short term memory okay so long term memory short term memory long term memory from the previous state short term memory from the previous state right so how it works is we have an input then some processing happens and then we have the output right output you have your current hidden state and your current cell state right which is your ht and your ct input you have your previous cell state your previous hidden state and your current input at time is equal to t1 right and what happens here is as i told you updates cell state and calculate the ht these are the things that is happening updating cell state is basically conversion of ct0 to ct1 and what is calculating of ht ht is ht hidden state right so in the next video we shall be jumping more into the gates and few other things hi in this video we are going to deep dive into the architecture in the previous video we understood some of the technical terms like ct minus 1 ht minus 1 ct and st apart from that internally in this architecture there are many more things to understand so let's get into more technicalities and deep dive into the architecture so let me redraw the architecture so the architecture was something like this okay now we had ht minus 1 and we had ct minus 1 right here we had let me draw and then i will explain so here is something like this like this we have damage this T. This is also HT. Here we have a sigmoid. Here we have a sigmoid. Here we have a tan H. And then an X product. Okay, and a little bit complex thing is from here goes so 
this is your ft this is your it this is your ot anything else and this is your ct dash okay so i have introduced few more things which is ft it ct dash and ot apart from that we all know about ct and ht right so six different vectors let's try to talk about them before getting into these four let's try to talk about ct and ht now what are ct and ht in simple terms ct and ht are both vectors okay they both are vectors okay now for an example let's say we talk about a 3d or a 4d, 4D vector right let's say a 3d vector so 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.1 it is 3d vector right now the dimensions are same that is a prerequisite that is the requirement of lstm and that is how it works ct and ht will be definitely of similar dimensions now let's say we have three sentences okay so we'll talk about three sentences one of them is cat so if you remember i took one example right a cat ran on the mat or something like that right um some something related to cat rat mat i gave in in one of my previous videos so let's talk about that or it could be anything a cat ran on the mat okay now from here let's say i'm removing the stop words and i am only having cat van mat that is my first sentence let's say i will also have my second sentence a cat ran ran just randomly i'm taking two sentences and then the last one is let's say van mat cat okay now these are my three sentences now if i want to proceed definitely i need to do the vectorization right so the one hot encoding of these words let's say we have cat ran and mat will be as simple as 101 sorry 100 right so for the first sentence it is going to be 100 0 1 0 0 0 1 for the second sentence it is going to be 1 0 0 ran is um, 0 1 0 and ran is 0 1 0 and similarly for third sentence it is going to be 1 uh, 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 right these are going to be my three uh, vectors so what i'm talking about is when i pass this entire thing into this basically one word at a time your input is taking so i also forgot the input type okay so in the input one word goes at a time so first cat then ran and then mat okay now goes now what about these four vectors ft it ct bar and ot now ft is nothing but your forget gate it and ct are related to your input gate and ot is related to your output gate all are vectors okay all are vectors and fortunately all are same dimensions okay now if ct and ht is 3d all of them will also be 3d that is the prerequisite okay so understood so if your ct and ht are of three dimensions or four dimensions or five dimensions 
all of these internal things are going to be of similar dimension okay so that's it in the next video we shall be jumping into the point wise operations and few other thing few other things hi let's talk about the point wise operations now what do you mean by point wise operations if you talk about these things right plus multiplication all these things we are going to talk about that okay so i'm just going to draw another diagram just to only focus on dt minus one now the first thing is here the second thing is here and then nothing and then here also you have thing like this okay what goes in here is ft and then here also we have x and then we have a tan h that's it okay let let's try to understand more about this now first of all what are x x is multiplication we all know about it multiplication then comes plus is nothing but addition and then comes the third one which is tan h which is nothing but an activation function right so these are the three point wise operations that happen inside lstm cells now let's try to take an example we all know that dt minus 1 and ft right now i'm just talking about this part this and this so what happens here is we have ct minus 1 and we have ft and there is a multiplication so what does that mean imagine we will be using a three dimensional vectors okay now let's say ct minus 1 is nothing but 4 5 and 6 similarly ft is nothing but let's say 1 2 and 3 so what will be multiplication the multiplication will be ct minus 1 multiplied with ft is nothing but 4 10 and 18 so the output is also going to be three dimensions same with addition if you now there is no addition here imagine there is an addition addition is going to be 5 7 9 right as simple as that now what will be tan h tan h is imagine you have 4 5 and 6 the output is going to be tan h of 4 tan h of 5 tan h of 6 now the exact numbers you can use a calculator to find it right so this is how things work apart from the point wise operations we also have few things like these sigmoid tan h tan h now we have sigmoid and tan h functions what are these these are activation functions if you know the basic concepts behind the neural networks let's say we talk about inn we have three neurons let's say we have five here and we have five here each of them are connected with each other This is your output layer, this is your hidden layer, and this is your input layer. Now, each and every layer has an activation function, right? Based on which we decide whether the neurons gets activated or not. That is what it is. Now, the first one, let's say this one, is your sigmoid function. What does that mean? In your forget gate, you have a sigmoid function right first of all this is same like this what's happening here is if you zoom in you will find a neural networks like this okay now the question will be in this particular part how many nodes will be there that is a question right how many nodes now we don't know 
this is nothing but a hyper parameter okay so that's it and similarly we also have tan h layer and in case you want to understand more about sigmoid and tan h you definitely need to go through the deep learning concepts in depth right i don't want to go into the mathematics right now sigmoid function is nothing but f of x is going to be 1 by 1 plus e to the power of minus x now if you draw it looks like this right if you take the if you take the derivative it looks like this derivative of sigmoid function lies between 0 to 0 0.25 and this lies between 0 to 1 we all know that and in case you need to know, know more about it you will have to learn the mathematics tan h function similar to sigmoid function something like this lies between minus 1 to 1 right tan h function is related to sigmoid function so i'm not going in depth about all these activation functions but the crux the idea here is yes there are multiple activation functions here and internally if you zoom in they are nothing but a neural network so going forward we will also be deep diving into each of these gates we will talk about forget gate input gate and output gate and we will see how each of these gate functions and works with examples and we'll also talk about the mathematical part behind hi in the previous video we understood the point wise operations uh, the different multiplication uh, addition all those operations we understood right in this video we are going to focus on individual gates right we all know how many gates are there we have three gates right we have the forget gate we have the input gate and we have the output gate let's try to focus on each one of them separately in this video we are going to focus only on the forget gate okay so I'm only going to draw the forget gate part. Now what is this? This is my CT minus 1. This is my HT minus 1. Right? Apart from that, if you remember, there is a pointwise operation here. From here, we have a sigmoid function. Right? And then it goes like this, like this, and like my x of t. And from here, further right i'm not concerned about the further parts that's why i'm dividing the graph here itself and this part is majorly your forget get right now what is the input to forget get the input to forget get is very simple the input to forget get is my cell state minus one my hidden state minus one and my input these are all the input that we are concerned about right the previous hidden state the previous cell state and the input and what will be the output here output of forget get the output is nothing but cell state okay tt and this basically is removing some of the words that are not important right removing non important words if my handwriting is not visible try to focus on my wordings what i'm saying remove non-important words okay and this is nothing but a sigmoid function and we all know when it comes to ann right if you remember input output hidden each and every layer has a sigmoid function if you remember and if you see a sigmoid function like this this also resembles a neural network neural network or you can consider it as a neural network layer okay, as simple as that now let's assume we have three nodes how many nodes three let's also assume our input <clears throat> is of four dimensions okay now as our neural network has three nodes we all know if you remember the previous video we talked about ft it ct bar and ot right ft it ct bar and ot now i'll try to take ft it ct bar and ot now 
with con with the context of forget get we are not concerned about it not concerned about this not concerned about this we are concerned about ft right so what will be ft ft will be a three dimensional node we also know that if they are same dimensions as they right so ct and my ht minus 1 will also be three dimensions okay so the bottom line here is if your input sorry uh, if your cell state or hidden state is of n dimensions your ft it ct bar and ot will also be of same dimension if they are of n dimensions in your neural network there will be n nodes okay so let's move ahead we have xt which is of four dimensions and others as three dimensions and let's assume xt is something like x i of one x i of two x i of three x i of four okay and uh, these are three dimensions you can assume it any number ct ct1 ct2 ct3 or ct i1 ct i2 ct i3 whatever it is okay now we will try to draw the neural networks now the first thing is what are we going to calculate we are going to calculate ft and we are also going to d uh, so what is where is ft this is ft right this is ft and second thing is once your ft is calculated your ft and ct minus 1 is also having a dot product so ct minus 1 dot product of ft dot product or pointwise operation of ft and this is the part which basically removes something from the long term memory context okay these are the two major things of forget get okay now moving ahead so let let me draw here itself so that we finish everything in one screen so in our neural network i have three neurons right so let me draw it one two and three simple now how many inputs are there to this neural network so there is one input and there is one input here right these two are going so one of them is ht minus 1 one of them is xt now xt is four dimensions ht minus 1 is three dimension let's try to draw it so let me draw ht minus 1 here and xt here okay now if you draw the lines all of them are connected to each other right that is how my neural networks looks like right so there are two inputs this part is this part is your h t minus 1 and the other part is your x of t right all good so far now what happens is <clears throat> there are biases attached here right b1 b2 and b3 and there are three outputs f1 f2 and f3 now these are nothing but f1 f2 and f3 which is nothing but f of t combined together it is f of t right so initially we had x ht minus 1 then we had xt then the multiplication and whatever is happening here and the output is ft right we all know that is how the ft is generated now how many weights do we have here we have around 21 weights right 7 multiplied with 3 21 weights are associated here which is denoted by w of 3 cross 7 how many neurons do we have here we have 7 cross 1 neurons right so f of t is a three dimensional right we all know 
if h t is three dimensional f of t will also be three dimensional and this is evident here now talking about this graph here okay now what is my input my input is seven cross one right this part and we have three cross seven here so if you do a matrix multiplication three cross seven multiplied with seven cross one right multiplied with seven cross one is always going to be a three cross one matrix okay and then you also add the biases so all my biases are b1 b2 and b3 so this eventually is nothing but three cross one plus all my biases all my biases are three cross one so i'm doing three cross one sorry, three cross one and matrix addition is always returning the same magnitude 3 cross 1 plus 3 cross 1 is always a 3 cross 1 matrix and this is eventually your f of t okay now if you talk about the formula the formula is very simple you get the formula like this f t is nothing but there is a sigmoid function here so f t is sigmoid function of I will write it as WF, which is nothing but my this part, 3 cross 7 part, multiplied with H T minus 1, comma X of T. Now we basically write this way. What is this? H T minus 1, comma X T is nothing but this part. There is a concatenation happening here, right? H T minus 1 and X of T, right? This part. I'll do it in yellow h of t minus 1 and x of t they both are going towards this sigma sigmoid function right this is written denoted like this okay so my f of t is sigmoid function of wf multiplied with h t minus 1 comma x t plus my biases which i will write it like this now you can see this is your 3 cross 7 matrix this is your 7 cross 1 matrix so your matrix multiplication is always going to return 3 cross 1 this is your 3 cross 1 matrix and there is a addition here and the output is always going to be a 3 cross 1 which is your f of t hence derived right and we all know f of t multiplied with c of t minus 1 which is happening here right again i will do it in a different color let's say i'll do it in white this part right the cross product here ct minus 1 and ft cross product is happening right now this part is specially done to remove something and that is all about the forget gate right now let's say you have ct minus 1 coming from here you have the dot product and you have ft coming from here Let's say your CT minus 1 is nothing but 4, 8, and 12, for example. And then let's say FT is nothing but your 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. Now, what will be the dot product? The dot product is going to be 2, 4, and 6. That means 50% reduction in memory. Let's say in your FT, one of them is 0, one of them is 1, one of them is 0. Your dot product will be 0 8 0 that means both these words are deleted from the long term memory and that is what is that is what this ft is doing that is what sorry not the ft the dot product of ft and ct minus 1 is doing that is what the forget gate is doing forget gate is removing some of the context from the long term memory okay that's all about forget gate in the next video we shall be talking about the input and the output hi let's get into the next gate which is the input gate in the previous video we had an understanding on the forget gate now we are going deep into the input gate what do you mean by the input gate input gate is basically this part let me draw a line and then i'll quickly talk about it so this is one line and potentially this is another line okay 
Now, <clears throat> this part is basically your input gate. Okay. Now, I'm just undoing it because we will be talking about it. Now, in the input gate, there are two stages. Okay. I'm going to divide this into two di different stages. So, let's say my first stage is I'm just going to talk about this part. Okay. Uh, basically this part okay this part now what's happening here is we have a sigmoid layer we have a tan h layer and then something is going from here and then there is a point wise operation right and from here and here we have h t minus 1 and here we have sorry and here we have x of t right that's the part i'm talking about right we have a sigmoid we have a tan h and there is a point wise operation now you can call this as let's say it you can call this as ct okay uh, it's called as candidate cell state and the previous layer we know this is ft and what's coming here is nothing but what is that ft multiplied with ct minus 1 this is ct minus 1 right cell state of the previous layer ht minus 1 the previous cell state right so ft minus 1 minus 1 is coming from here through here and whatever goes here there is a plus operation right bitwise uh, sorry point wise operation here so forget about this part we'll talk about this part later just focus on the red highlighted part okay in the red highlighted part this is what the part is right we have a sigmoid we have a sigmoid we have a tan h we have a tan h and there is a cross operation point wise operation okay now what is the role of this particular layer the role of this particular layer is to add some information to the cell state that's the whole motive of input gate what is cell state cell state is your long-term memory state right ht is your short-term memory state so i will be dividing the task into three different stages okay so three stages now the first stage is the calculation of ct which is your candidate cell state the second one is the calculation of it which basically decides which value from candidate cell candidate state which value from the candidate cell candidate cell candidate set whatever it is and the third one is majorly the calculation of ct right ultimately we will be calculating the ct part right now so far what's going to ct is ft multiplied with ct minus 1 right now <clears throat> what do you mean by this particular thing theoretically we know that the role of input gate is to add some meaningful information to the long term memory cell right now going back to our three little pigs example when i told you that there are three little pigs they are well grown up they go separately and they start building their houses the first pig builds his house the second pig builds his house using wood the first using straws and the third using uh, bricks right when you are passing this information automatically the first pig the second pick, the third pick goes into your long term memory because you are keeping it aside and then you are moving ahead with the story, right? That is what input gate is doing. So, talking about the stage one, in the stage one, we'll talk about this first and then we will talk about this, okay? So, in stage one and two, what's happening is I'm talking about this tan h thing, okay? So we have tan h, we have something like this, 
this is h t minus 1 and from here we have x of t right the output of tan h is c t dash which is your candidate cell state right now how many units do we have in tan h uh, tan h tan h and sigmoid what are they they are just neural networks layers right so tan h has three nodes so i'll draw those nodes one two and three so what is going inside tan h it is the concatenation of this and this what is this this is a four dimensional and this is a three dimensional if you remember right i talked about when we were talking about gates we talked about forget gate right the xt is four dimensional and the ht minus one is three dimensional right so reiterate all those things i am going to take xt which is four dimensional and ht minus one which is three dimensional okay so this is my ht minus one one two and three and this is my x of t okay so i'll try to draw these lines and then right now how many so this is your h of t minus 1 this is your x of t all together is seven dimensions right here i'll notify uh, i'll write it down as w of c <clears throat> it is 3 cross 7 how many weights 21 weights right now this box is nothing but a tan h box tan h box and tan h box right what goes outside we have a bias attached to it i can write it down as b1 b2 and b3 combined together to make it bc b of c and the output is eventually your ct dash which is your candidate scale right i'm just talking about this part okay what's going inside is a concatenation of ht minus 1 ht minus 1 and x of t i'm just talking about this box right the output of this is nothing but your ct dash right so what is this again the formula of this is going to be very similar to this formula we talked about this formula right when we were talking about forget get we talked about this formula where is that formula this one similar to this the formula of c t dash is going to be tan h of w c multiplied with h t minus 1 x of t plus b c sorry b c okay now what is w c it is a 3 cross 7 matrix this is a 7 cross 1 matrix this is a 3 cross 1 matrix now its multiplication is 3 cross 1 matrix and then we have an addition operation so the final output is going to be a 3 cross 1 matrix and that is going to be a ct dash or ct candidate cell state right so ct dash is nothing but theoretically it is nothing but the potential important information that might be helpful in the long term memory so that is how your ct dash is calculated now i'm going to talk about the it how the it is calculated it is here okay this is it okay let me redraw the graph i'll redraw and let me retake this image so i have this image now where is my it let me just write down my it okay so that you all are clear with this so this is it okay this is your ct dash right this is your ft if you remember right now i am going to talk about it now what is it you can see if i just take this part what is it it is there is an input 
h t minus one and we also have x t. Then there is a sigmoid function and then i t. Right? If I'm just zooming this part, so similarly, this sigmoid function will also have three nodes. If you again draw, it will look like this. The input is three dimensions cross four dimensions. So three dimensions, which is your h t minus one. And then four dimensions, which is your x of t. Again, you can draw all these lines, which will be very complicated to draw. Right? All these things. Here we have again bias, bias, and bias. And the output here is your i of t. Right? Now, all these biases combined together can be written down as b of i. Here you can write it down as W of I, which is a three cross seven matrix, which is having 21 weights, right? This is your three dimensional data. This is your four dimensional data, right? Now again, similar concept like this. If you want to write down the formula, I can blindly write it down. It is going to be I of T is nothing but the sigmoid function of W of I multiplied with H of T minus one comma X of T plus b of i now what is this this is a 3 cross 7 matrix this is a 3 cross 1 matrix this is a 4 cross 1 matrix multiplication is going to be a 7 cross 1 matrix like not multiplication it's a concatenation right and then this multiplied with this gives you a 3 cross 1 matrix and then comes a 3 cross 1 matrix and then you, if you add it, your final output is a 3 cross 1 matrix, which is I of T. Okay. Now, I of T is nothing but your filter. And CT is nothing but your candidate cell state. Right. This is what it is. Now, if you go back to the basics, if you go way, go back to previous, like before two videos, I talked about this thing, right? This part. Just focus on this part. I told FT, IT, CT dash, and OT. CT and HT. If these are three dimensions, all these will also be three dimensions. Right? And same is happening. In our HT minus one was three dimensions, because of which my F of T was also three dimensions. My C of T minus one also three dimensions. My this thing is also three dimensions. My um, IT is also three dimensions. My CT dash is also three dimensions so far. Whether OT will be three dimensions or not, I will talk about that in the output layer, out in the output gate. Moving forward, my IT is my IT and CT dash is clear. So my this thing and this thing is clear, right? My the last thing is going to be my CT. So I'm talking about stage three. So my IT is clear. My CT dash is clear. Now, what about my CT? So if you remember what's happening here, there is a pointwise operation, right? So what's happening here is IT multiplied with CT dash, right? If IT is a three cross one matrix, if CT dash is a three cross one matrix, the output is going to be a three cross one matrix. So here a three cross one matrix goes. You can call it as CT dash bar. Let's say. Now this is called as a filtered candidate cell state. And finally, this part, I'm, I'm talking about this part, okay? This part and this part, we have a plus operation. So what is this part? This part is nothing but IT multiplied with CT bar, right? This part. And what is this part? This part is FT multiplied with CT minus 1. So how do you write the, what will be the output here? Okay, the output here will be CT, right? So the output here will be CT, which will be nothing but the cross product of FT multiplied with this plus, there is a plus operation with 
i t multiplied with c t bar. Now this is a three cross one matrix. This is a three cross one matrix. The add addition pointwise operation is also going to be a three cross one matrix. All clear? Now, if you don't remember, uh, if you don't understand, I would recommend you to go through this video multiple times to understand because it's very very simple to understand. At least I have tried my best to make it look very very simple. Okay, so we'll do a quick recap on both the gates. Uh, not both the gates. We'll just do a quick re okay let's do a quick recap on forget gate and then quickly we'll go through the input gate so in the forget gate everybody remembers the input of forget gate is ct minus 1 ht minus 1 and xt right the output is basically the cell state which is ct right which removes the non important words right and there is a sigmoid function here so sigmoid function has three nodes right and ht minus 1 let's assume we have three dimension xt has four dimensions so to your sigmoid function goes two inputs right the concatenated input of ht minus 1 and xt so here i have shown ht minus 1 and xt so that's why it is a 7 cross 1 matrix in between you have sigmoid functions which is your 3 cross 1 and then ultimately you get 3 cross 1 matrix which is your ft right similarly if you take the concepts of what has been taught in the forget gate in the input gate there are two divisions one is this part and one is this part right there are two functions sigmoid and tan h for the first one to calculate it it goes through a sigmoid function the input is basically the concatenation of ht minus 1 and xt right so and then you can calculate your it which is this and similarly for the tan h function again ht minus 1 with xt goes through a tan h layer and then you get ct bar ct bar and it there is a bitwise a pointwise cross operation and that final operation goes through a plus operation with the ft cross ct minus 1 that comes from the forget gate output right and then finally your ct is nothing but this part which is ft cross ct minus 1 and this part which is it cross ct bar which is a 3 cross 1 plus 3 cross 1 which is a 3 cross 1 matrix so eventually a 3 cross 1 goes here now in your output layer which is the potentially last layer which is this part sorry uh, this part Here we will be talking about few other things in the next video. Hi, let's get into the output gate. So let me write down output. So far we understood the functionalities of forget gate. We understood the functionalities of input gate. Now it is output gate. Okay, so output gate is basically this part. Anything beyond this particular. Now, if you ask me to draw this this part, this entire part, okay. Now, inside output gate, you can notice one thing. What goes inside is basically I'll write it down in a different. What goes here is B, um, and here this part, the sigmoid function part. Here you can call it as OT okay now we have the current state already we already have the current state right which is nothing but your ct so far we need to convert this into ht right ultimately you can see this i will try to draw so ct is coming from here and then ot is coming from here and then it goes ct goes through a tan h layer so basically the flow is like this ct goes through a tan h um, tan h layer so ct gets converted into tan h of ct and then this part and ot so this part goes through a cross product or a pointwise operation with ot right and then the output is basically ht right this part is understood that is all about the output gate right 
now we will try to get more into this so if i if you ask me then output gate is divided into two different stages same like the input gate uh, stages my bad stages okay the first stage is the calculation of ct right calculation of ct which gets through the tan h function of ct right and what is the output of tan h if you remember the activation functions sigmoid function always lies between 0 to 1 sigmoid function is like this right tan h function lies between minus 1 to 1 so tan h function is basically like this right this is your tan h function and tan h function lies between minus 1 right so my first stage is very simple my first stage is ct comes in and there is a tan h layer that ct goes through and finally ct gets converted into tan h of ct the second stage is basically the ot part okay now ot comes in and there is a point wise operation here so basically we have ot and a point wise operation with tan h of ct that is my stage 2 right now we will try to understand what is ot what is ot now i will just focus on this part okay this part what is ot ot now first of all before getting into ot there is a sigmoid function right and we all know how many nodes there will be there will be three nodes right why because ht minus 1 is also having a three dimension xt is basically four dimensions if you go through the forget gate and the input gate these are all things that i have already explained right we have taken an assumption that the number of nodes was three the input xt is basically four dimension right now if i if i take this piece of information through a sigmoid function this is how it looks like right in sigmoid this is sigmoid this is sigmoid this is sigmoid right now three ht ht and then four xt right got it now you can draw these lines And then the second one, okay. So here we have seven cross one, right? There is a concatenation operation of ht with xt, so it is seven cross one. Now here we have the wo, which is three cross seven, right? We have twenty one weights, right? Here comes bias one here comes bias 2 here comes bias 3 you can combine them as bias 1 bias 2 bias 3 or you can also write it down as b of o so what will be the formula of ot this is ot right this is ot the formula of ot is very simple it is a sigmoid function of let me do it little bit here so that it fits in the screen ot is nothing but a sigmoid function of wo multiplied with ht minus 1 comma x of t plus b of o right we all know this is nothing but a 3 cross 7 matrix this one 21 weights this is a concatenation of 3 cross 1 and 4 cross 1 which is a 7 cross 1 now here there is a cross product so the output is 3 cross 1 and then you have b0 which is 3 cross 1 and you basically are adding them so the final output is a 3 cross 1 matrix and this is nothing but your ot right so that's ot understood what is ot now what is my ht which is this part what is my ht there are two inputs right one is this and one is this so i can also write it down like this 
एच टी इज नथिंग बट ओ टी मल्टीप्लाइड विथ टैन एच ऑफ सी टी राइट टैन एच ऑफ टी दिस इज द फॉर्मूला ऑफ एच टी राइट वॉट इज ओ टी ओ टी इज अ थ्री क्रॉस वन मैट्रिक्स सी टी इज ऑल्सो ए थ्री क्रॉस वन मैट्रिक्स द टैन एच फंक्शन इज ऑल्सो ए थ्री थ्री क्रॉस वन एंड द फाइनल आउटपुट इज अ थ्री क्रॉस वन मैट्रिक्स राइट दैट इज नथिंग बट द आउटपुट फॉर करेंट टाइम स्टैम्प ओके सो एच टी माइनस वन वॉज ऑल्सो अ थ्री डायमेंशनल डेटा एंड नाउ एच टी इज ऑल्सो ए थ्री डायमेंशनल डेटा so at the end of input for get and output get what do we conclude the conclusion is let's say our xt was a four dimensional data and all our sigmoid or tan h functions or the layers are using three nodes then the conclusion is dt ht dt minus 1 ht minus 1 f of t i of t dt dt dash ot everything is nothing but a three dimensional data right that's all about lstms and that's all about the core concepts the mathematics the formulas behind lstm in case you have not understood lstm so far even with such clear um, information or clear way of explanation i have tried my level best i will recommend you to go through these videos once again especially the lstm part there are five to six parts right so just go through them once again i'm pretty much sure you will be able to understand apart from this if you go through various other blogs and platforms you will just be confused because i have not seen any blog any video where the explanation is this way um however i have taken examples from multiple explanations from multiple blogs from multiple resources and i have finally come up with this type of explanation which i usually do with my uh, regular students and and i believe that the understanding on lstm is clear right now. so that's it that's all about lstm especially the output get and uh, we'll see you in the next video so let's move ahead with the lstm practical application okay so far we have understood what lstm is all about we know the differences between rnn and lstm now in this particular video we are going to focus on the practical application okay so for this exercise we are trying to take a nlp use case i hope you must have already known about a use case called as next word or a next phrase predictor right if you don't recollect what this use case is um i can give you an example if you go to gmail the moment you start typing in certain uh, mail right you start typing in mail hello sir i am not feeling well because of which i will not be able to and then automatically gmail suggests you something right not be able to join today or not be able to uh, come to the office today or something like that, right so that is basically a scenario of next phrase prediction which is also called as smart compose the google uh, uh, google the use case i talked about uh, the gmail one uh, google term it as smart compose okay so similar kind of thing we are going to do using a sample text okay so this is nothing but a text generator right text generator similar use case now what we are going to do let's say for this exercise we will be taking a corpus of data okay and then using that corpus of data we will be creating so we will be converting this corpus of data so what is corpus as simple as that imagine it as a paragraph of words and sentences okay and then we are going to use it we are going to convert it into a supervised learning problem right now what is a supervised learning uh, problem 
supervised learning problem is very simple you have a data you have some x variables you have some y variables you you know divide your data into training and test samples and then using the training data you create models right and for the testing data you only pass the x data to do some predictions right so labeling is must you need to have a y variable so that you can predict it now how do we convert this entire paragraph data into numericals ultimately we need input and output right uh, output right in the format of x and y variable now how do we do that so for example uh, let's say i'm going to take an example i'll take here itself hi my name is that okay i can write my full name Sajid. i just go to sat okay now another sentence i live in hong kong okay these are my two sentences now our goal is to create a data set which is something like this input and output x and y right now what i am going to do is for the first sentence so i will write it here as input right here as output okay now for the first sentence i will take hi my output is my my second input is hi my the output is name my third input is hi my name output is is similarly hi my name is that similarly for the second line i live i live in i live in hk now that becomes my that becomes my data set but can we pass this data set to a computer algorithm or to our machine learning models now the simple answer is no why in learning models or any kind of computer based models they do not accept categorical data you need to convert them into numericals okay now what if i will do a simple change what i will do i will be trying to convert the text into numbers okay so i'm rewriting everything here so hi my name is that i live in Kong. so i will name it as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now how will my input and output look like so the first one input is 1 output is 2 second one input is 1 2 output is 3 third one input is 1 2 3 output is 4 fourth one input is 1 2 3 4 output is 5 fifth one it is 6 output is 7 then we have 6 and 7 output is 8 then we have six, seven, and eight, and that becomes my final data. So the step one for this kind of activity, this kind of project, this kind of use case is converting text into number, number numbers, numerical representation. Right. So this particular project is not an end-to-end -end project. I will just reiterate this thing, uh, but this project will give you a lot of ideas okay however end to end projects we will be completing we will be going through at the end of the modules not now okay so moving ahead everything is done right now what we will do is we will be jumping into a practical use case. okay so what practical use case we will be doing so I will jump into Google Colab in a while. So I have opened my Google Colab. So here I will be doing some exercises, right? 
so initially we will be taking our own textual data and then we will be creating converting it into uh, the numerical representations and then eventually we will be able to move ahead to create our input and output okay so from a textual data from a paragraph data we are going to create our supervised data set right so for this exercise what we can do is we can go to any of the blogs and probably let's say we'll pick any blog let's talk about data analytics and we will be using this data for our training set okay so let's say text is equals to okay this is my text now we will divide this into different lines so that it is convenient this is my first line second line third line this data is explained getting this thing a part of data analytics which calls this thing but this is therefore okay we have just few lines of code okay as simple as that so from here what i am going to do is i am going to start my code okay so i am executing this line my text is read now we will start importing the tensorflow library so tensorflow as tf from tensorflow dot keras dot pre processing uh, dot text import tokenizer okay i'm going to take the tokenizer okay so and then i will run this piece of code once my library is ready my library is imported then i will initiate the tokenizer okay initiate or instantiate the tokenizer so let me name it as tokenizer equals to tokenizer and then i will be doing tokenizer dot fit on text okay and then i will be passing my text so if i do length of tokenizer dot word index you will be able to see that there are 87 words okay so there are 87 words so moving ahead so my tokenizer is ready then what i am going to do is so i am going to run through this loop of sentences how many sentences do we have one two three four five six seven right now let's say length of text the length is 763 words okay for now it is not required i will be running through a loop so for sentence in text dot split so i'm going to split the entire text based on slash n right i hope everybody knows about this basic thing that this and this is separated by a slash n this is basically a slash n which takes you to the next line okay so i'm going to separate the text i'm going to do a text dot split on slash n okay and then once that is done in the next thing i will be printing the sentence so as an output you will be able to see multiple sentences okay so the first sentence is data plays a vital role second sentence is directly or indirectly for daily life date decisions blah 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 and then blah 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 and then fourth line fifth line sixth line and seventh line okay so this thing is pretty much clear what i am doing is i have created a tokenizer I am calling the fit on text on my textual data that I have used. And then this is just a word index length. So this is the main task, right? For sentence in text dot split, I am printing the sentence. Now, what I am going to do is inside the tokenizer, there is something called as text to sequences. Okay. So instead of printing the sentence, I will be doing print of tokenizer dot text to sequences now what does this do if you hover you will see 
what this function does prints the values to a stream or sys dot standard output by default okay so let's try to call this and see what is the output now here i am going to pass my sentence okay now i'll print it uh something is wrong tokenizer dot text to sequences uh ah my bad so text to sequences and something and then bracket close my bad okay so now you can see we had seven sentences right i will run the same thing in a different line of code so that you can compare both okay so i have the sentence and then i have the same thing that i did right i was doing the same thing right from my textual data my name is sat i live in hong kong we were doing this right conversion of input to output uh, conversion of textual data to input output format right for now i have not prepared the output i am just doing the conversion of the sentences to word uh, sentences to numbers that's it now here this is a two dimensional list so i will just change it to zero so that i can see only single dimension okay now what do you mean by this the meaning of this is very simple data is one place is 21 r is 2 vital is 22 and so on right is there a repetition of word data is here okay you can see fourth line second word is data first line first word is data so the number should match one fourth line second word fourth line second word one matching last line third word data last line third word data match. right so that's the beauty so it is matching now after this is done what i'm going to do is i'm going to create the input sequences now what is my input sequence let's say for the first line okay data plays a vital role in our everyday life let me write it down data plays a vital role in our every day's life what is the numerical representation 1 21 so let me write it down this way without uh, so the numerical representation is 191 sorry 21 21 222 222 role is 23 24 hour is 25 everybody's every days is 26 and then 10 okay now what how will i convert it into input and output forget about the output what will be the input if one then output is 22 uh, 21 if 1 comma 21 output is 2 if 1 comma 21 comma 2 the output is 22 if 1 comma 21 comma 2 comma 22 the output is 23 and goes on right so i need to create the input sequences first okay so this is where the complexity will change little bit so after this i am going to run through a loop i in range of one comma length of my um okay so here instead of print let me just save it as a tokenized sentence and then i am going to use it here so one comma length of tokenized sentence and then here i am going to create the input sequences append so i also need to define this list because empty list and then dot append uh, what i need to append the tokenized sentence of colon i plus one okay i will explain this what is i plus one so for the first word when i is equals to one it is taking colon two that means two words then i equals to Two, three words three words and then four words and then five words and then six words and so on right so now if i just print my input sequences 
you will be amazed to see something like this it's a huge 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 uh data here let me roll up a little okay so i'm talking about the so you can see this is basically the first line and then the second line you can see for the first line 121 1 21 2 22 23 24 25 26 10 right so 121 121 2 121 2 22 121 2 22 23 and then 24 then 25 then 26 then 10 the first line is over then moves on to the second line which is 27 comma 5 and then this then this then this then this then this and it goes on right and then comes the third one and it goes on right this is basically your input sequence okay now if you talk about this input sequences you can see is um, they are having inconsistent length right we have two we have three here we have four here we have five here so it's inconsistent like if you know the concepts of neural networks you must be already aware that we when we create a neural network especially the input layer the input has to be in a similar format right if you are dealing with images it has to be like something cross something pixels and that is consistent throughout all the input right similarly in case of natural language processing use cases whenever you are passing some information to a neural network it has to be of similar dimensions right so here what we need to do is we need to introduce zero padding now if you don't know the concept of zero padding in short we have to add zeros in front or in back of these numbers okay now how do we get started with this we have to find that kind of sentence which is having the largest length let's say there is a sentence which is having the largest length potentially it has to be the sentence number uh, 12345 potentially i'm not sure two might be long as well but let's say number five line is the largest line let's say it has uh, 20 25 keywords and line number two is the second largest with let's say 22 keywords then all the lines should have a length of 25 so here if there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 keywords then we need to add 16 zeros right we need to introduce zero padding in each and every line okay so how do we do zero padding it's very simple uh, with respect to um, nlp we can use tensorflow keras any of these libraries to introduce zero padding okay so to get started with zero padding now before getting into zero padding let's try to find which sentence out of these seven sentences which sentence has the highest amount of numbers okay so what we will do is simply we will be doing length of x for x in input sequences now if we do this we will be uh, length of x for inputs okay. you can see all these are different lengths right length of x so let's say this one 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 and 7 8 9 2 something like that right same same goes here okay 2 till 9 and again then starting from 2 now from this entire list we need to find the maximum value so i will be using the max keyword in front of both uh, basically i will be using the max keyword if i do this the maximum one is which one the maximum is 34 words okay so i'm going to store it in a variable let's say max length equals to 34 now what I will be using tensorflow dot keras pre processing dot sequence. If you do not remember all these uh, library, it's completely fine. If you just Google search keras 
zero padding or pad sequences you will be able to get it okay so it's here so sequence we will be importing pad sequences and then i will be calling the pad sequence on which one on input sequences and then i will be passing maximum length is nothing but the max length do you need a padding in front or in back we will be using a front padding so if you do this pad sequence is not defined pad sequences okay if you run this you can see now everything is having similar uh, similar length all the all the um, all the different uh, attributes right here we have different attributes right all of the different attributes now have similar length and what is that length the length is nothing but 34 if you print max length you will be getting that number right that is 34 so now let me try to save this in padded input sequences if i run this you will see padded input sequences looks like this right now each and every line is now having 34 values right there will be definitely one of the records or multiple records which will have 34 values and none of them will be zeros right because that is the largest sentence i hope you understood right now from here what i'm going to do is so first of all why everything is zero and only one and 21 is here i hope you understand this right so this comes from here right from here we were able to get this input sequences right so the first one is something like this so the first one was 121 the second one was 121 2 the third one was 121 2 23 right uh, 22 22 and so on right and moving forward now what we have is the first one becomes 0 0 0 so 32 zeros and then 1 and 21 the second one becomes 31 zeros and then 1 21 and 2 and then the next one becomes <clears throat> 30 zeros and then 1 21 then 2 and 22 and goes on right i hope you understand this now what now the next thing is creating our x and y variable now what will be my x variable <clears throat> all the first 33 objects are going to be my x variable and the last is going to be my y variable right so for the first line 0 dot 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 1 is my input and my output is going to be 21 right for the second line 0 dot 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 1 comma 21 is input output is 2 and goes on right so how will we divide this let me just show you padded input sequences of i need every row and every column excluding the last column so you can see 21 is missing here 2 is missing here 22 is missing here and so on 16 is missing here 6 is missing here and so on right that becomes my x what will be my y my y will be padded input sequences of all the rows and only the last column so if you want to see your x this is how your x looks like if you want to see your y this is how your y looks like okay so the first record y is 21 then 2 then 22 and so on 21 2 22 and so on right all clear we now have a structured supervised learning data set we have the y variables and we have the x variables as well we will move ahead so if we go ahead we already know that we have our input we also have our output right now we started with a strategy if you remember the strategy was very simple that we will start with a textual data and then we will be eventually converting it into uh, basically we'll be converting it into numbers right 
now once we convert it into numbers we eventually want to build a supervised learning data set right now go back to the basics of supervised learning if you remember supervised learning is of two types one of them is a classification and the other is regression right now in this use case what do we have if we go to the um, data we have something like this so we have input we have output so let's say dot 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 one the output uh, the output is 21 dot 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 one 21 the output is uh, two dot 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 one 21 two the output is uh, 22 and so on right now in this case if you see the output is ever the output is a y variable right the y variable is here a number right so will this be a classification problem or a regression problem please pause the video and try to think about it okay we have all studied in our basics of machine learning that classification is nothing but classifying fraud versus not fraud um churned versus not churned and so on and regression is usually dealing with numbers right but in this case our output is not a continuous number it is a discrete number right so this is not a regression problem rather it is a classification problem okay now in this classification problem again this is a classification and a neural networks problem right so we have to train a neural network now on the output as this is a classification problem again classification problem is of two types right one is binary classification and one is a multi class classification right binary is having two classes fraud not fraud disease non disease blah 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 here in multi class classification we have multiple attributes we have 21 we have 2 we have 22 and dot 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 we have multiple right so what we need to do we need to perform the one hot encoding here okay so one hot encoding i will try to take an example and try to show you what do i mean by one hot encoding here so how many unique words do we have in y uh, it could be multiple right uh, let's assume there are 100 100 of them now out of 100 words if i do one hot encoding so the output will be of 100 length right so imagine we'll take a simple example of three words now if we have three words let's say the data is for example these are the three output words okay now if i do one hot encoding what will be the value of the it will be one zero zero right do it in this way the will be one zero zero data will be zero one zero and is will be zero zero one as simple as that now let's say we feed our data let's say this is our neural networks and we have our input which will be having three right uh, sorry output will be three my output layer this is my input layer input could be multiple now imagine all of these lines are constructed now here as we have three outputs in the output layer let's say this returns me 0 0.6 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 so obviously if you round it up this is one this is zero this is one so the final prediction will be the first word right if it is 0 0.1 0 0.7 0 0.2 then obviously the prediction is second word right and that's how it works so let's move ahead with the code and try to see how many unique words do we have in y okay so first of all um, there is something called as we already defined our tokenizer right so there is something called as word index if i run this i will be able to see the word index here okay 
you can see the indexing is done from 1 till 87 so 87 unique words are there okay now jumping into the next line what we will be doing is i'll use my tensorflow.keras.utils import to categorical so using this i will be calling my number of classes equals to so here it has to be um it so there are 87 words right it has to be 88 why because here the numbering starts from 0 till uh, sorry the numbering starts from 1 till 87 when you are converting into the one hot encoding or doing feature encoding we need to add plus 1 okay so once this is done okay that is how my final data looks like and after this so i'll just quickly add this to my y my y is ready and now what will be the shape of my y the shape of my y will be 119 comma 80 what will be the shape of my x my shape of my x will be 119 comma 30 okay so my x and y both are ready now we will move into the next step where we will be creating the model so let's go ahead with the architecture diagram now in the previous video we were able to create our x and y if you remember my x shape was 119 comma 119 comma 33 right and my y was 119 comma 88 right now how does the architecture looks like so we will be having an embedding layer okay so embedding layer so input goes through the embedding layer and then we have the lstm unit and after that after the lstm unit we will have a dense layer and after the dense layer comes the final output okay so this is how the architecture diagram looks like what exactly will be the input that goes in what will be the output at the embedding layer what is the output at the lstm layer what is the output of the dense layer how does my neural network looks like something like this we will be talking about it slowly okay as of now let's jump into the coding part let's try to convert this architecture into code and then we will talk about this part so we already had the x and y um let me just rerun it so that we will be okay so my notebook is not active anymore so i'll just try to rerun everything which should take hardly not more than one minute so my padded input sequences i divided my x and y so if you look at the word index there were 87 words and we created it into categorical so we created it into numbers right and then my y shape is 119 comma 88 and x shape is 119 comma 33 right so till here we already had the understanding our next piece of code is very simple we are going to create our tensorflow sequential model okay so i'll try to write down here model building So in the model building, let's say I will start with my um, libraries tensorflow.keras.models import. We will be using the sequential model, and then from tensorflow.keras.layers. Uh, if you remember the architecture, we were having embedding layer, we were having the LSTM layer, and we were having the dense layer, right? So I will use three layers: embedding lstm and dense all of them are part of the tensorflow keras layers right so if you know uh, if you have already been through ann or cnn or rnn models i think you will be able to recollect the code so we will initiate our model which is model equals to sequential um, okay in the same line itself i will write it down model dot add 
embedding and then something comma something i'll talk about it it's arbitrarily i'm writing 12 comma 12 12 and then what will be my input length equals to something okay i'll let's not generalize any number n comma n input length n okay and then i will be adding my lstm unit and again here n okay and this is let's say something else and then finally my model dot add tense and here again i will add something activation as this is a multi-class problem i will be using softmax um, as an activation function right now try to understand this thing in the embedding layer right what goes into the embedding layer is x dot shape right so it's basically 119 comma 33 right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to define the number of um, units as an output of embedding as 100 okay so let's say i will consider this as 100 now what will be this n value this n value is nothing but it is going to be 88 okay so my embedding is going to be 88 comma 100 in the lstm i will be using let's say 150 nodes okay now this is a hyperparameter usually we go for hyperparameter optimization to identify the best numbers for now um 150 is a beautiful spot i will start using 150 and remember if your number of nodes is 150 your ft your xt your ft your ht your ct all those things will be 150 dimensions right go back to the uh, theoretical part that we were covering and you will be able to relate number of nodes in your lstm layer if it is 150 or 100 then your all the ht ft ct bar it everything will be those many dimensions so here it is 150 and the last layer is dense layer so here i will mention it as 88 and that's it um that's it so let's run this okay input length what will be the input length the input length will be uh basically 33 okay uh, because this this one 33 okay so i will run this piece of code my model is ready and then what i'll do is i'll do model dot compile uh, my loss function as this is a it's not a binary classification problem i'm going to use categorical cross entropy okay simple and then what will be my optimizer again it's a hyper parameter but as of now i'm using adam metrics i will use accuracy as my metrics okay so i'll run this piece of code my model dot compile is ready now my model dot summary will give me the summary results which will tell me what will be the output shape at uh, embedding output shape at lstm and so on and these are my total params all are trainable params none of them are non-trainable now if you don't understand the calculation of this i have already explained all these things very clearly in the deep learning videos but go back to those videos and try it. okay so that's it that's all about the model summary now let's try to understand a bit more on the architectural level on what goes inside the embedding layer what goes outside from the embedding layer and so on so if you remember our x is basically 119 comma 33 and y is 119 comma 88 and this is what we trained uh, in the practical code right we initiated our sequential classifier and then we added our embedding 88 comma 100 input length is 33 and then lstm 150 and then finally a dense layer of 8 so let's try to understand this thing okay i'll redraw our embedding layer so let's say this is my embedding layer okay now what is my x my x is nothing but 119 comma 33 so it's basically a list of 33 numbers right most of them are zero and few of them are non-zero right so this x goes through this embedding layer so let me um so you're clear right so this this part is my x and then if i talk about the embedding layer so our input goes here and imagine there are 100 um, 100 numbers here okay? 
hundred numbers. Now, so so what is the length of this? How many how many words do we have? Like how many? Uh, what is the shape of x? The shape of x is one ninety nine comma thirty three, right? So when one word goes in, this is the input that goes into the embedding layer. Okay. Now here the output will be one thirty three comma hundred because of these hundred numbers, right? And now let's say here we have the next layer. How many weights there will be assigned? The number of weights will be eighty eight multiplied with hundred. So hundred multiplied with eighty eight. Where eighty eight comes from? Eighty eight is the number of number of unique words that we have in the Y. Right now, if you go to the model summary from the coding part, when we uh, created this model, uh, I showed you right in the model summary in the first layer in the embedding layer, the total number of trainable parameters were eight thousand eight hundred, and that is where this number comes in. Okay, so eighty eight is nothing but the total words in the vocabulary, right? And hundred is this number. Now, as we all know, x is nothing but a sparse matrix, right? Most of the numbers are zero, and some of the numbers are non-zero, right? Now, our main task is to convert it into dense vectors or dense numerical representation. Now, what does each x looks like? Let's say I'll talk about the first row: zero, 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 dot, 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 and then last one is, uh, what was that? Last one is one. Okay, the last digit is one. now each of these is represented as a 100 dimensional vector okay each of this is represented as a 100 dimensional vector okay now when you are actually creating a rnn network or a lstm network dot 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 so what happens here let me redraw this somewhere here let's say this is my network dot 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 like this okay now as i told you each element in the x is a 100 dimensional vector okay so what happens is our first element goes in in the first box which is nothing but a 100 dimensional vector right this goes in and then second word goes in again 100 dimensional vector and this process goes on and here basically you have the h of 33 right we have 33 units right h of 33 now h of 33 what will be the uh, dimension it will be 1 comma 150 why because in the lstm layer we used 150 units right here we have used 150 units so here we will have 1 comma 150 okay as the number of nodes is 150 right now so from here basically uh, from here our output layer will be connected and how many neurons will be there in the output layer there will be pause the video and try to answer this how many neurons will be there in the output layer go back to the dimensions of x and y 88 right so 88 neurons or 88 outputs i think outputs is not the right term 88 neurons will be there in the final output dense layer right so this is how the flow happens able to get my point each word is nothing but in in one x entry each parameter is nothing but a 100 dimensional unit that goes into these units and then finally we have the h33 from there let's say imagine you you have the network like this like this like this like this dot 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 like this and from here comes the h33 and from here it goes into the the output layer which is of 88 outputs 88 nodes right now this is the dense layer dense layer now as we are using softmax if you go back to the code we are using the softmax activation function right now 
if you are using the softmax activation function your values will always lie between the range of 0 to 1 right so the maximum probability neuron is going to be the output let's say for one transaction this is 0 0.1 this is 0 0.1 this is 0 0.1 dot 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 one of them is 0 0.4 0, 0 0.0 something 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 now this let's say is the highest one and which which particular word is this let's say 78th word is the highest probability as per softmax so that becomes our pre predicted output simple right so how does this numerical uh, value looks like it's a list of 88 units 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.05 dot 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 0 0.4 dot 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 0 0.1 dot 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 and this becomes the highest unit so this becomes one rest all becomes zero dot dot zero dot 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 and this is which index let's say 78th index that is your predicted output so let me summarize this uh, whatever has been done so far We'll summarize so initially we have a embedding layer right we have the embedding layer input goes from this now after the embedding layer basically we are converting each word to a hundred dimensional vector right and how many such vectors are there there are 33 such vectors right always remember let me get your x and y data here so that it is easier for you to understand 119 33 119 88 right okay so so after the embedding layer is done we are converting each word to a 100 dimensional tense vector right and how many such vectors are there 33 now here each vector goes through dot 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 and let's say this is your 33rd vector which is nothing but 1 comma 150 and that's that's because of the lstm layer right in the lstm unit you have defined 150 right so the number of nodes are 150 as the number of nodes are 150 if somebody asks you what will be the dimension of ht dimension of ht will be 150 what will be the dimension of ct bar 150 what will be the dimension of it ot everything will be 150 right so you have 1 cross 150 now you are connected with the final output dense layer dot 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 and how many neurons do we have in this output dense layer 88 88 neurons or simply 88 outputs simply 88 outputs right now each of these will have a numerical representation when one entry one input goes in there will be 88 output right something like this let's say 0 0.1 something 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 and let's say you have to find that particular neuron that has the highest value let's say this is the 78th neuron so the word that is present in this location becomes the predicted word right that is the entire flow of what we have done so far so we already had this model ready if you remember we had used these tensorflow libraries to create a sequential model we created an embedding of 88 comma 100 input 33 i need not have to explain all this again so let's go ahead and start doing the model processing so model is uh, created model is compiled now we will be fitting the model with the uh, x and y data okay so how does my x data looks like my x data looks like 119 comma 33 and my y data is 119 comma 88 right so 88 neurons in my output layer right so let's go ahead so first of all i am going to do model dot fit on xy and then i will be using epoch equation. now if you remember this is basically a very small paragraph of data right 
so i'm not expecting a huge accuracy however the training accuracy might be high but obviously testing accuracy might not be great i'm not sure it might be good but i'm assuming it to be not great because it's just seven lines of um, you know textual data so let's go ahead the model model has started running and after 100 epochs the accuracy is actually 97 percent which is good um, but let's not be very happy because this is but this is accuracy right because i if you see i have passed the entire x and y i have not divided the data into training and test because in training and test you fit the model with the training data and then test with the testing data right we don't need that because this is an nlp problem so i'm directly fitting x and y and we will randomly use one of the text words or multiple set of words and we will see how the predictions okay the model is ready right now what we need to do is i need to test the model test the model. Now let me make it bold so that it is visible to you. Now here I will be creating a new text. Let's say data. Okay. Let's try with a single word. Now you see data is present here. Data is present here. Now I don't know what will be the prediction. Or oh, data is also present here. What will be the prediction after data? We don't know. Okay. So I have defined my text text 2 is equals to data now after that what what i need to do before doing the model dot predict i need to follow all the things that has been done with the x and y data right you go back to the basics when we started you can see we started with pad sequences no before that also before that also we started with the tokenization text to sequences and then we did padded padding pre padding right so input sequences maximum length was 34 and padding was uh, pre right so all these things we did now we are also going to do the same thing with this text too so what are, what we are going to do we are going to do tokenize we are going to do padding and then finally model prediction so what will be my tokenization code very simple tokenizer dot text to sequences and on what on my text to data so if i run this you can see data is one now i this is a 2d array i just need the zeroth element so the zeroth element i will store this uh, store this as tokenized text equals to this or maybe token text just for simple then i will be doing the padding okay so pad sequences then i'm going to pass the token text then i'm going to pass the max length is nothing but 33 uh, 34 and then i'm going to pass padding is equals to pre and then i am going to store it as let me show you how the padded sequence like padded sequence right i'll store this in a variable called as padded text okay now comes the model prediction which will going to be model dot predict what the padded text right if i run this you can see there is an output input zero of layer sequence one is incompatible expected shape is 33 Bad, so I will change it to 33. I'll run this piece of code, and then this is my model's prediction. Now, if you remember, the model was a softmax model, right? Now, in the output layer, there are 88 neurons. One of these neurons will be having the highest value, and whichever that neuron is, that particular location word will be your final. So for example. For example, this is the largest value. So the second index word will be your output for the data input. I hope you are now from this 
we need to find the highest value right so what we need to do um numpy is not imported so i'll just import numpy once again import i as an p dot arg max i will use on top of this so i'll run this piece of code and then you will see a 21 so the 21st location is the largest one two three four eight twelve sixteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four Uh, 21 sorry 2 3 4 5, 6 8 10 11 12 this is oh sorry this one this is the largest one now what is that particular word let's try to find out okay so if to do tokenizer dot uh, sorry word underscore index you will find what is 21 so data plays so plays is my final output data plays which was part of the first line itself data plays okay now the reason behind this i already know um see basically there are one two three four five six seven data words right after data all of these words are unique right imagine is we have two or three times so potentially our output would have been is okay so as beyond data the second word is all of these words are unique words maybe that's why arbitrarily output is placed but whatever it is it is a good output right the output is good so let me also kind of uh, automate this or maybe without going through this huge list how do we get the exact keyword directly so what i'll do is for word x in tokenizer dot word index then i will do items if index equals to equals to 21 then print word what is the word the word is place okay now instead of 21 i don't want to hard code it i will go back to my code i will make it as pos equals to this then i will use this word pos Place. Okay, that's my output. I will also do one last thing. Let's say, let's say I'll copy this piece of code, and then done. I will copy this piece of code. Then copy this code, and then I will try out other things. Let's say data place. I will pass text 3 token this here it uh, token Data plays a data plays a vital role. The data plays a vital role. Try to run this in. So it's doing good. It's doing good, right? So the next word prediction is doing. So that's it. Let's also try with two other things. Data is do we have data is is nothing let's try to out of the 
data is a then we'll get this data is vital data is a vital okay is a vital what data is a vital role okay. vital role in in for every day life oh that's actually it's doing good i'm pretty much impressed with this model so you can just test it out with this a piece of code that i have written and i will definitely recommend you to use the same piece of code for a larger corpus of data if you have a huge blog or maybe write down a huge blog using rgpt and then use that blog as your input then try to build your is and try and play around with the data that is where you will be able to understand how the models how the code is right so that's it now if in case you are interested to know more about the improvements now there is nothing rocket science here because this is not but a neural networks model so the improvements are very generic improvements that i usually tell for any kind of neural networks model so the first improvement i would like to say is increasing the lstm units increasing the dense layers sometimes we can increase the dense layers obviously increasing the data um using a pre-trained model on a larger corpus of data so all these things can be done uh, apart from that obviously hyper parameter optimization a very very right so that's all about this practical uh, obviously at the end of nlp we will also have multiple other use cases related to lstm you till then